A key part of programming with SwiftUI is state. Rather than start with the computer science definition of state, let's go with something that might be a little more familiar, the dashboard of a car. The most noticeable part of a car dashboard are probably its gauges and odometers. They show the car's current speed, fuel level, distance traveled, and so on, each of which is some kind of numeric quantity. Dashboards also have warning lights, such as the low oil warning light, or the it's time to take the car to the shop for some overpriced maintenance light. Each of these lights is either on, indicating that there's a problem that needs the driver's attention, or off. This on-off, true-false information can be described as a Boolean value. So the information on a car's dashboard, such as speed, fuel level, whether or not the car needs maintenance, taken all together is a visualization of the car's state. Keep in mind that the dashboard isn't actually the car's state. It's just a visualization of it. To see what I mean, think about what happens when the driver changes the car's state. For example, the driver presses the accelerator and the car starts moving faster. The dashboard then updates to show the new speed. So the car state is how fast the car is actually moving and the dashboard is just helping the driver visualize that fact. Internal circumstances can also change the car's state. For example, as you drive, the car burns gas. The car's state is how much gas is in the gas tank and hopefully the dashboard updates the fuel indicator. But what happens if the car's state and the dashboard aren't in sync? For example, what if your dashboard breaks and doesn't accurately show your car's speed? Well, that could be a big problem. You might get a ticket or worse. It turns out that this type of mistake is quite common while developing an app. That is, your user interface might not accurately represent the internal state of your app. You may have sometimes come across an app with a bug like this. For example, an app says you have five new messages, but then when you check, you actually have a different amount. One of the nice things about SwiftUI is that you're forced to develop your apps in such a way so that your user interfaces and your state are always consistent, which prevents these types of frustrating bugs. Let's take another look at Bullseye and think about what our app state would look like if we want to display a pop-up alert when the user taps the Hit Me button. It turns out that when it comes to displaying a pop-up alert, there are only two possible conditions. Either the pop-up alert is on the screen or it isn't. When the app first starts, the pop-up alert isn't visible. That's what we have so far. What we want to happen is that when the user taps the Hit Me button, we want to display this pop-up message to the screen. As you can see, at this point, our app state for Bullseye is very simple. Either the pop-up alert is visible or it's not. This is a Boolean value, which means it's either true or false. Do you remember how a few episodes ago, you learned that objects have data and functionality? Well, the Boolean value to keep track of whether the pop-up alert is visible or not is an example of some data that we need to keep track of on our content view object. Let's see how we can do this. Okay, so remember we want to add a piece of data to our content view to keep track of an important part of app state, which is whether or not the alert is visible. So to do this, we're gonna hit out right after this first line where it says we're creating an object called content view that's a view. Add a couple new lines there, and this is where we're gonna define our piece of data. So the first thing we're gonna do is add the keyword at state. This is a special keyword in SwiftUI that says, hey, this is a special property that, or a special piece of data that wherever I change it, you should refresh the body, and that way the body and the state will always be synchronized. So if you ever have a value like that, you wanna mark it with at state. Next, we're gonna put var because we're creating a variable. Remember, a variable is a piece of data that can change. Next, we're going to give our variable a name, and we're gonna call it alert is visible. Note how I'm uppercasing the I and the V in here. That's kind of, that's this called camel casing where you make the first letter lower and every letter of a, the next word uppercase for the first letter. And it's just kind of the best practice of how to name variables in Swift. Then we're gonna cut a colon so we can define the type of variable we're creating. And this is going to be a bool, which means it's a true or false value. And finally, we're going to use the equal sign and we're going to set it to be false as its initial value. All right, now I'm just gonna fix my spacing here because I like to use two space tabs and you can do that by selecting some code and using command bracket, left bracket to move it to the left. And 
Now that we have a variable, what we want to do is whenever you press the button here, we want to set that value to true. So after the button press line, hit enter and do self dot. Self dot is the name of the current class, which is content view. And then we can see here it's found the alert is visible variable that we just created. So go ahead and click that to save some time typing it. So we're going to say self dot alert visible equals true. Remember that in SwiftUI, you're forced to develop your apps in such a way that your user interfaces and your state are always consistent. To do this, you keep track of your app state using variables marked with at state. Each state variable will have an initial value. For example, we set alert is visible to false. Then when the app starts up, iOS calls body to get a dashboard based on the current app state. For example, Currently, the body method returns a welcome to my first app and hit me button, but doesn't show a pop-up. So, so far, so good. But what happens when you set alert is visible to true? That is changing the app state. So it's important that the user interface is then updated to be consistent. Well, since you already marked that variable with the special keyboard at state, iOS will automatically refresh the body. So now it's your job to make sure that body takes the app state into consideration and displays an alert pop-up if alert is visible is true. Let's take a look at how we can do this. Okay, so we want this button to present an alert when you tap it. And luckily there's a built-in method that helps us do that. So add a new line right after this last curly brace that belongs to the button. And this is why spacing is important because we've spaced it nicely this way. We can tell that this curly brace corresponds to that button. And then we're going to call a method on button called alert. And the first parameter it takes is called is presented. And you give it a variable that keeps track of whether this alert should be on the screen or not. And the good news is we've already created a variable for that called alert is visible. So we can put alert is visible here. But there's one twist. Alert is visible is a special type of variable. It's a state variable. So whenever you have a variable like that, you got to put mark it with a dollar sign in front of it. You'll learn more about what this means later on in this learning path. Okay, so then we're going to put a curly brace. And what happens in here is we have to define the alert we want to present. So just put two parentheses and then an arrow and then alert in. You'll learn more about what all this crazy syntax means later on in the learning path, but for now you can think of it as meaning this method, we're returning something that takes no parameters and it returns an alert. Okay, so we have to type in return alert. And you can see here autocomplete has brought up a couple options here. We're gonna want, want the one here that has a title, a message, and a dismiss button. Let's go ahead and select that. And for the title, we're going to return a text label that says hello there. For the message, we're going to select a text label that says, this is my first pop up. And for the dismiss button, we wanna use one of the default buttons. And if we hit dot, there's some default type buttons we wanna work in here. And we actually want the one that's called default. So we're gonna select that. And then for the label in that, we're gonna put some text and it's gonna say awesome, like so. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and I hit Command R to build and run. Alternatively, you can click the play button. And now if I tap hit me, I see a pop-up that says, hello there, this is my first pop-up, awesome. Before we go, let's review what happened one more time. So we created a state variable here to keep track of whether the alert is visible or not. And then inside, when you tap the button, we set alert is visible as true. Now, because we marked this variable with at state, Swift UI will refresh the body and we've set up the body so that the button will display an alert whenever alert is visible is set to true. So considering alert is visible is set to true, it creates an alert here that has it set up the way we would like it. Pretty cool. Congratulations, you've just written your first iOS app. What you just did may have seemed like gibberish to you, but that shouldn't matter. We'll take it one small step at a time. You can now strike off the first two items from your to-do list, putting a button on the screen and showing a pop-up alert when the user taps the button. Take a little break, let it all sink in, and come back when you're ready for more. You're only just getting started.